Well, welcome back. DefendX, a nanotechnology company focused on developing products to keep surfaces clean. And during the discuss, we have Dr. Uh, Carolyn Myers, the president and CEO, joining us. But first and foremost, welcome. Thank you. It's nice to be here today. It's a pleasure to get you on. Now, I just want to dive into this firstly for newer audiences before we dive into milestones, kind of the deeper aspects of the company. Maybe brief us on an introduction to exactly what Fendex nanotechnology is and kind of why you're focused on this market. Sure. Um, well, let me start with uh, Fendex. We incorporated the company back in uh, mid-2020 um, with the idea of uh, licensing and developing surface protection products. And uh, the first product that, or the first license that we were able to achieve was for a coating um, to, that is for long lasting protection of surfaces. Uh, since 2020, we have been developing a film. Um, we're also in the process of de developing a spray formulation, which I think is much more, it offers much more flexibility and adaptability to surfaces. And we also have ventured into the medical device area and coating catheters, and we're actually focused on Foley catheters. Um, and I could talk a little bit about that uh, later if you want to do that. But anyway, we're really excited about the, the coatings and we continue to advance them. The, um, the uh, film, we've gone through beta testing and it, and it performs very well. Uh, the spray and catheter are still in development, formulation development, but I anticipate um, them moving into next stage development probably by the end of 2025. Um, in addition to that, in April of this year, we signed a supply agreement for an eco-friendly sponge. Sponge, you might say a sponge, but just keep in mind the North American household sponge market is worth $2 billion. So, you know, it's a pretty sizable market and I guess it makes sense. Everybody buys sponges. So we're excited to move into that category. And again, this is about cleaning surfaces, but in this case, it's with minimal environmental impact. And what I mean by that is this sponge is very differentiated from traditional sponges. For example, cellulose sponges, they smell bad, in short periods of time, et cetera. This doesn't do that. Um, there are other synthetic sponges that are the same. However, synthetic sponges will just build up in landfills and be there forever and release toxic chemicals. Our sponge, which is synthetic, is also biodegradable. So, you know, it offers some really interesting and differentiating uh, points. And then the last thing, and I'm really excited about this, is we're looking at developing an AI diagnostic to detect contamination on surfaces. And what we're in the process of signing agreements with partners to help us develop this. But the whole idea is, again, this would be consumer facing initially, is that you would use your mobile device. So that that's where you know we're building a broad base of. of products and um, we're pretty excited and you know we are going to continue to look at partnerships we're going to continue to look at additional licensing m a opportunities to continue to expand the company and surface protection yeah definitely appreciate the insight on, um, on all of this but i wouldn't mind just kind of spanning out we're in the latter half of 2025 uh, maybe just give us an understanding of where the company's going milestone expectations what do you guys see coming up well, you know, one of the things that we are doing and we're spending quite a bit of time on this is really trying to focus on building our U.S. investor um, interest in, in Fendex. And, you know, recently we made a few announcements relating to that, with which is really to, um, um, you know, optimize our share structure as well as do debt settlements to um, improve our or reduce our liabilities, et cetera. So we're in the process of doing all of that. So I think that's front and foremost to start getting U.S. investment. As you know, we're also on the OT, OT, OTCQB. So there is the opportunity for U.S. investors to, to invest. So that's really a key focus of ours over the, over the coming months. In addition to that, um, we are filing several provisional patents, one on the AI diagnostic, um, and you know another on the formulation for the spray, another on the formulation for the catheter. Um, we, you know th there there are patents that in the very near future will also be granted. So we're we're getting some pretty exciting, um, you know, uh, uh, interest 
but from the company standpoint in terms of moving our patents forward. And quite frankly, all these provisionals will be owned by Fendex, which is really important because we want to own that intellectual property. But the whole idea here is to protect our entire product line, which is what we're really focused on. In addition to that, and I already mentioned this, we're really focused on partnerships, um, building partnerships, um, joint ventures, uh, et cetera, related to our product line and, and their product lines. And then lastly, we'll continue to develop our, 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 cath our catheter coating, um, particularly focused on Foley catheters, where the, which are the catheters that you put into the bladder, um, which are highly prone to um, E. coli infection. So we're hoping that this will help to alleviate down the road um, bladder infections. And then our, our, our spray formulation, we're really excited about this. We have made some good advancements. Hopefully I'll be putting out a release on that in the next um, next month or so as it relates to the advancements we've made and next steps as it relates to the spray. So we got a lot going on. Yeah, no, this is incredible. But uh, just to finish up anecdotally, I mean, uh, you've given a little insight into your background here already, but uh, do you want to ex expand a little bit on what led up to that aha moment? How did you kind of get involved with all of this? Yeah, in, uh, good question, because uh, my background, um, I've spent... I spent most of my career in the pharmaceutical industry um, on the commercial side, business development. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I live in New Jersey. I came here, I'm originally from Canada. I came here to work in head offices of large cap pharma companies. And I've held very senior level positions within um, a few of the large cap companies here. Uh, and in my tenure, I've launched 25 plus products with me and my teams, not me personally, um, into, uh, into the U.S. and other global markets. Uh, I've done 50 plus uh, licensing and M&A transactions in my career. Um, I've also had the opportunity to be the president of a revenue generating branded pharmaceutical business. I've also had the opportunity to be the president of a uh, of a transdermal um, development company and commercial. Um, and then I, I, I left all that and uh, um, I, I didn't know what I was gonna do because uh, I, I needed a break. And um, I don't, you know, I contacted, I had a lot, a huge network. And so I contacted everybody to say, hey, listen, I'm leaving, here's your new contact, et cetera, et cetera. And so they said, you're free, can you come and help? So I'm like, all right. So through serendipity, and I have to be humble here, through serendipity, I started a consulting business and it, it, it went really well, I have to admit, through my networking. And um, that's how I came across the technology that we ultimately formed Fendex around. Uh, and then I became the CEO. I was working with um, um, an entrepreneur and uh, out in uh, Vancouver, who um, said, I need some help with building a business strategy for this. So I reviewed it all. This was just pre-COVID too. We, I, we didn't even know COVID was coming. Um, but, but I said, this is really cool and very, very innovative. And you should really start a company around this. So that's when we incorporated Fendex and, um, and I became the CEO. I thought it was going to be an interim basis here. It's five years later and I'm still here. And, and we've grown, grown the business quite significantly. And again, we hope to be revenue generating, you know, in 2026. On that note, we'll pass it off to the viewers as always. We'd love to know what you think, but consider subscribing as news catalysts come down the wire. We're going to bring it to you here. But on that, we look forward to catching you in the next one.